Yes, Morbies. Hello, gamers, and welcome to my video where we're going to be killing Dragonfly with killer bees. I've made the world size small and also have um, made more killer bees, but uh, yeah. I'll probably put a timestamp if you just want to skip to the actual fight, but this is going to be all of this setup. This run starts off like any other, gathering twigs and grass and other basic resources. After obtaining this tier 1 speed circuit, I make my way across the world looking for a bunch of bees and a suitable location to base. I'm trying to find a nice rock biome so I can get some rocks. Um, and I'm also trying to get the nice birch nut biome because I like basing near Pig King and it'll probably be useful. But I also want to, of course, locate Dragonfly. Also, <laughs> good lord, look at all these bumblebees. However, the goal right now is to go and rush the ruins to get ruins gear. Specifically deconstruction and construction amulets, so that way I'll have an easier time making bug nets and um, other stuff, I guess, because I will need a lot if I want to kill this boss. Also having stuff like those light crowns and those light suit would be nice, but I plan to use something like a bush hat so I do not disrupt the fight. But yeah, I pop out at the end of this wormhole and I make a little science machine in the middle of nowhere. I still have yet to look at all the important stuff, so it looks like I'm facing down right here. I also scan a Muggles for the night vision circuit, <clears throat> and now I just have to continue and to locate the uh, the birch nut biome because that's also where fireflies will be, which is one of the components to actually make the night vision circuit. Anyways, I eventually come across a wormhole, which takes me literally this is probably the best wormhole I could have located because check this out. <laughs> It takes me in between the birch nut biome and dragonfly. This is literally exactly what I wanted to find. So I, <laughs> yeah, I just found the perfect base spot. Of course, I want to put base near some bees and a, and a um, cave sinkhole. But um, yeah, I just gotta search around a little bit more. Oh, and uh, here we go. Here's the, <laughs> the plug sinkhole right in this area. I eventually make my little base in the same birch nut forest with stuff like an alchemy engine and things I'll need for the ruins. I also decide to build a single crockpot engine, however I really won't need too many. The reason I won't really need very many crockpots is because I plan to use mostly gears for this run, and I'm going to get them all from Ruins Rushing, because WX can eat gears and it's one of the best perks in the game, and nobody freaking talks about it, even though it's like so, so useful. But uh, yeah. Anyways, I now have my circuit, so let's go to the ruins. Hooray. I firstly run into the blue mushroom biome, which is actually pretty helpful. Blue mushrooms are by a long shot the best mushroom to just eat by themselves, as they restore your health and take away sanity, which is really not that big a deal. Sanity is the least important of the three main stats, so uh, yeah. They're very useful to have in mass, especially if you're a character who's probably not going to lose all the sanity, like WX with night vision. Pretty much is free health. Following this, I decide to set up my little void walk machine and start trying to walk and find the ruins. They did almost patch it this update, but um, they didn't. Once they patch void walking, I'm actually done with this game though. This is like the most useful bug ever in any video game. Although with the new patch it does take a while to get working, but it is still just as effective as always once I finally break through. Anyways, it's a time to engage Hyper WX. I'm not sure why those two clips didn't sync perfectly, but here we are, the ruins. Now, you can see my long winded and crazy paths, so I'm quite relieved to finally have found the ruins. However, my first target is the Ancient Guardian. So, why did I stop here and not just go around to Ancient Guardian? Well, I don't know, but I guess it's time to loot up and make an Ancient Medallion in order to find the Ancient Guardian. The best way, at least in my opinion, that to deal with this particular room is to get the rooks to hit the bishop. The bishop is always the most dangerous clockwork at any given time because he can hit you from pretty much anywhere, and yeah, it's pretty much impossible to dodge. Unless you have like a lot of speed. And then you can just make the two rooks fight. I do however want to try and scan one of these rooks, but uh, I don't know if it's really worth it. Because if they hit me, they could break my armor and then kill me. So uh, yeah, I just try to take these two out and also make them smash into Thilsite statues, but uh, then the nightmare cycle begins. 
Oh, uh, there's no way there was this many shadow creatures that were supposed to spawn. Uh. Anyways, these, these nightmares then continued to chase me until the universe died out. Eventually they left and I was able to kill the few that remained, but it's just so annoying how long monsters chase for you in this game. That's my problem with all video games really, but it's really realized in Don't Star. Anyways, I make a Thulcite medallion and then I go to where it marks and find the Ancient Guardian. As you can see here, I'm trying to scan this beast, however, for some reason, um, I didn't bring a pan float. I feel like I forgot to pack one up or something. But um, yeah, that's kind of important when trying to scan the Guardian as he's very deadly at close quarters and that's you need to get really close to scan him. So typically you'll use his built-in stun mechanic, but it doesn't last as long as you need. However, after I create and equip the speed circuit, it's kind of curtains for a guardian. There's really nothing you can do to beat me. I fought him countless times, and this is no exception. That's kind of the hardest part of the fight. I'm gonna skip through it because um, just watch like literally any of my other videos, and you'll know how to guardian fight this. Watch any other Dota Star video, actually. <laughs> Anyways, the loot I got was really good, but not for this run. I mean, yeah, lazy explorer and stuff is obviously gonna be helpful, but I don't even know if I'll use magic luminescence at all. Oh yeah, bye Jimmy and. Eh, I mean, yellow gems, I mean, it's whatever. You know, it's, it's good stuff, but I would have preferred a deconstruction staff or a construction amulet instead. However, I'm pretty happy with what I got, and I also get a ton of rocks, which I can use to build walls for the Dragonfly Arena. So, uh, yeah, pretty good, pretty, pretty mythic pull if I do say so myself. I would tell you all about my runes clearing exploits, however, I kind of want to keep this video on the shorter side, and this really isn't really what you came here to see, which is why I'm going so quickly why this video is really weirdly paced. But uh, yeah, just know I got a bunch of construction amulets and gears. Oh my god. Anyways, I also found the pan flute after I needed it, but I still might need it for the dragonfly fight. But um, yeah, I mean, time to catch some bees, whoop de doo oh, Guys, I've got a confession to make. I cheated. See, in order to make this run possible, I need bundle wraps. And in order to get bundle wraps, I need to beat Queen B. And I'm not about to try to beat Queen B while doing this stupid challenge run. And I didn't even get good stuff from the ruins. So, I um, tried to give myself the, bun the uh, blueprint for bundle wrapping. That didn't work. So I spawned in B Queen, and then a bunch of meteors just randomly hit her. So yeah, I'm sorry guys, I cheated in spawning in Queen B, but she died by natural causes. So I guess it's pretty fair. Then I went around grabbing a ton of saplings and grass tufts to get stuff for bug nets, and I went and killed all the spiders. <laughs> now it is time to begin the capture. Catching killer bees are is pretty hard because getting near them will aggro them, and catching one will aggro all nearby killer bees. Burn, burn! <laughs> Too many beehives, they will all burn. <laughs> you will learn to serve me anyway, killer bees. Doesn't matter if you have a home. <laughs> I need uh, quite a bit of grass to make all these notes, so uh, yeah. I probably could have just turned off all the normal beehives, but they don't pose much of an issue. Normal bees don't aggro unless I start capturing some, and they're easy enough to avoid. Anyways, I wrapped up my killer bees in groups of 40 like this. I don't really think I needed to do this, but it helps them. I don't know, they come out more like a cloud than just a giant column, so it'll help them all aggro onto Bank Dragonfly. But uh, now it's time to prepare the actual arena. Unfortunately, there were a bunch of hound mounds in the way. So I decided to um, recruit the local pigs with my leftover monster meat to help me deal with these hounds. Attack me, piggies. Let's do it! Alright piggies, go fight Dragonfly, you guys got that! Anyways, I decide to block off every pool individually, because I don't think building a giant thing- Well, I don't think the lava would do anything anyway, but it's just kind of a habit, so uh, yeah. I'm using the method, method I showed off in my Dragonfly guide. And then, and then I beat- I, um, I mean, I built more, more stone walls, and I- I bought more, a lot of the monsters, you know, the lava, <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's time to make the final preparations for the fight. 
I wanted to create a nice bush hat so the beast would not actually fight me. That's pretty much it. There's not really... I mean, I've been doing all the preparation the entire beginning part of the video, so I don't know, yeah. You know. Alright, it is time to begin the, f the boss fight. I have myself my bush hat, my thilsite suit, and all my bees. I'm going to start off by putting Dragonfly to sleep, before then dropping all of the bundles at once right near her feet and lighting them on fire so they'll pop open. And I just have to hide before they explode. This is my first strategy, so I want to see if this one proves useful. This will have all the bees echoed onto her at once, so hopefully she'll be able to um, fight them all and, you know, can't kill them all before they kill her. I don't know. Also, dang it, I think the health bar got cut off by the top of the screen. Seeing how the bees are kind of getting destroyed by the lava, I decide to roll back and do this again, and luckily that allows you to see <coughs> the health bar whenever the rollback ends. So uh, yeah, now you can actually see how much damage she's taking. My stupid torch ran out, and then <laughs> for some reason WX wanted to stand up, so I had to put all the bees to sleep again, because a couple focused on the robot doing nothing, rather than the giant monster attacking all of their, um, all their comrades. Maybe they're mad at me for capturing them. I mean, right now they're doing all right. They're doing a little bit of damage. Uh oh, killer bees run, Bruh, Those bees are literally cooked. I decide to try one final time. This time, slowly releasing the bees, like one group at a time. This is the way they won't all diagro, and they won't all go fly into the lava pond and kill themselves. So uh, yeah, hopefully this strategy will prove useful. It does take them quite a while, but eventually the first batch is able to get her through her first phase, making her go spawn lava. I eventually decide to release this smaller batch of only like 20 or 16 bees before releasing another big one. Unfortunately, Dragonfly is aggroed onto me, even though I'm completely invincible. I mean, invisible. Like, she can't. How can she even see me? I'm hidden in a bush. I thought the killer bees attacking her would make her change her mind from targeting me, but apparently not. Oh, never mind, apparently so. Oh, never mind, okay. Dude, freaking targeting this game is so dumb, I hate it. And she goes to spawn in lava. Good dummy. Eventually though, the combat is back on track. Unfortunately, some bees would somehow go be able to fly through the walls in order to fly over them. But then they'd get stuck on the other side and burn to death. Also, the lava didn't seem to really care about anything. I guess they can only target humans. Fortunately, she goes in rage mode, and I step in to put her to sleep and use another bundle to spawn some more bees. Sorry, five or so bees that I couldn't save. Oops. This almost took as long as the time I punched Dragonfly to death. I mean, it's kind of similar to if he has. Go watch that video, by the way. But, uh, dang. This takes. This took like. Actually, this like one attempt is like 45 minutes of footage, and I'm just cutting through it. Because they're so mind numbing. <laughs> I swear these killer bees have like x-ray or something, there's no way they can actually see me. Eventually the numbers of bees start dwindling, however Dragonfly is so low, almost as low health as Deerclops is.
Eventually, though, most of the killer bees are defeated, and it's up to me to continue their legacy. Somehow, my lazy explorer does more damage than the killer bee stinger. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but like, look how big those suckers are. Enough speed makes it so easy to be dragonfly. Like, look at this, I barely ever get hit, and when I do get hit, I have my freaking full size suit. So why like, WX is truly a goaded S tier character. Uh, so yeah, it is possible. If you just, um, like pack more killer bees, I guess. Subscribe.